videos. Uh, today we are doing a resistance in series. We are doing resistance in series. Okay, this is the apparatus for the resistance in series. Let's look at the uh, the apparatus is all about. Okay, we start from here. We can see that this is nothing but a terminal which is meant for battery to be connected. Okay, this is the switch for switching it on and off the circuit and followed by then we have got a ammeter actually this is not an ammeter this is called small m capital this is called as milliammeter which measures current in milliampere followed by this is the circuit everybody which is connected here from milliampere it goes to one end here and this goes the other end goes to the resistance again we have got this common end of the two resistance and the other end of the resistance is connected here this resistance connects here and then we have got a rehose stand and finally this is connected back to the negative end of the battery so here we are going to connect battery look at this this is milliammeter which measures current okay and here if you look at this here this is nothing but called as voltmeter voltmeter measures potential difference in volts okay i will be talking more about this and the milliammeter after i mean little later okay let's start how to connect the circuit we have got a battery this is uh, battery eliminator we call it as and this is the knob which is out there here if you look at this there are 2 volt 4 volt 6 volt 8 volt and 10 volt these are nothing but the potential difference which we can apply it okay so just by rotating this knob okay we can connect the number of batteries we want and put the potential difference here look at this this is maximum 8 volt so we will keep this to maximum 8 volt only we will not exceed that so we'll keep that precaution in our mind okay let us start connecting the circuit what we are supposed to start with, this is the simplest connection or the simplest circuit to be connected. Only one connection and that's it. Only one connection to be made here is that the battery connection. I repeat, this is the simplest connection which we are supposed to make in all the three circuit diagrams or circuit experiments. This is the simplest, only one connection to be made and that's battery. So let's start connecting the battery. I have got one red wire which I'm going to connect to this red end of this battery that is positive here and this I connected to the positive end of the battery here and then I've got a negative uh, one more black wire which I'm going to connect it to negative terminal of the battery to the this here negative terminal so my battery is connected and my dear students this is the only connection we are supposed to make in this experiment only one connection and thus it please do not hunt for the more wire here this is the only connections we, which are supposed to make okay after that what we have to do is nothing but is you have to take two wires okay why are we taking two wires because if you look at this this voltmeter is not connected here anywhere so if it is not connected i need to connect them so if i need to connect them i need a wire so i have two wires one is a black one is red this is the red end i connect one red end is here i connect one black end is here what I do is, I'm going to connect it here to get the resist, potential difference across R1. I'm going to connect it here to get the potential difference across R2. All those things I'm going to discuss a little later. First, let us start with this here. Okay, when you talk about this, when we start with this, taking the observation or the readings, we are supposed to first take the least count as we know that. So we're going to take the least count of this milliammeter, okay, small m, capital A, small m and capital A, that's milliammeter, that's milliammeter gives a reading in milliampere. So we will be taking about the least count of this. Let us see how to take the least count. I will show you how to take the least count of this milliammeter. If I show you this, okay, milliammeter, here you can see that we have got a 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. So if we got 0, 50, 100 and 150, all these numbers which are displaying here, from 0 to 50 if I talk about or the 50 to 100 when we talk about or the 100 to 150 when we talking about, any of the two big numbers when we talking about, under that, within that, if we look and if we count, there are 10 lines, there are 10 lines if you count. So from 0 to 50 we have got 10 lines. So I'm going to show you here in the form of pictures here you can see that, okay. Suppose this is my millimeter and uh, I draw this and this is your zero and then this is going to be your uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth. This is the tenth one and this is zero. So this is here as is marks 50. So I'm marking it as 50. 
Then again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, tenth. This tenth one is nothing but 100 here. So what I'm going to do is how to take the least count. Very simple. Okay. Least count to take the least count here is the 10. 10 lines stand for 50 milliampere. So one line is going to stand for how much? X. So let us cross multiply. So it has become 10X is equals to 50 into 1. Okay. So 50 into 1. So X is equals to 50 upon 10. And that's come out to be 5. So this is 5 milliampere. So one reading or the one line stand for 5 milliampere. So here when I talk about this, each line over here, each line I'm talking about, each line stand for 5 milliampere. My dear students, each line 5 milliampere. So there are 10 lines. So obviously 10 5 is a 50. So this is going to be 50. So each line stand here is 5. This is the lead count, least count of this. So this is how to find out the least count of a millimeter and let us talk about the how to find the least count of the voltmeter. So here is look at this. This is voltmeter. Again, we have got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. If I look at this here, 0 to 2, I've got again, if I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. There are 10 lines, 0 to 2, there are 10 lines again. Again, 2 to 4, there are 10 lines. 4 to 6, there are 10 lines. 6 to 10, again, there are 10 lines. So here is 10 line represents 2 volts. So let us again work it out here. So this is 0. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. 10 this 2 here it is marked as 2 volt. Okay. Then again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10th one is marked as 4 volt here. So what we see here is 10 line means 10th line stand for how much 2 volt. So 1 line will stand for how many volt that's x let's cross multiply this has become 10x is equals to 2 into 1 x is equals to 2 upon 10 which comes out to be 0 0.2 volt so my least count here is least count of voltmeter is 0 0.2 volt means each line each line measures 0 0.2 volt this is to be noted and here for milliampere the least count is become 5 milliampere means each line measures 5 milliampere so now let us fill this gap here least count of voltmeter is 0 0.2 and the least count of ammeter is come out to be actually it's not ammeter will correct it here we will make it as milli ammeter and this comes out to be 5 milliampere small m we have added now zero error as we have already uh, talked about last time what is zero error zero error is nothing but this needle coinciding with the zero if the needle is coinciding with the zero there is no zero error so here is if the needle is above zero or the below zero okay here also milliampere also if this needle is coinciding with the zero, there is no zero error. If it is above or the below, then there is a zero error. As we can see here, this needle is coinciding with the zero here. Again, here we can see that the needle is coinciding with the zero. So there is no zero error. So what we'll do is we are going to put it here as dash or there is no zero error. So there is no zero error in this. Okay. So let us start taking the reading. How to take the reading, everybody. Now the final thing is the reading. How to take it. So look at this here, this is the set of observations we have. Okay, we're going to take it one one reading here, one for R1, one for R2 here. And then we will calculate. Let us see how to take the reading. To take the readings here is first, first we have to switch it this on. So this light indicating that this is on. When this is on, this is connected here. What we have to do is we have to switch this on. See if you off it, this is no deflection here. If, if it is off, there is no deflection, but the moment I switch on, there is a deflection, means now this is off. Okay, here is the deflection, but you can't find any deflection over there because this is not connected. There is no deflection here right now because it is not connected. The moment I connect here, yes, you can see some deflection here. Okay, so uh, what we are going to do is we are going to connect this to R1 here only. Okay, what we are supposed to do here is first, we will keep our current at one fixed value because 
when we talk about the resistance in series the current is constant so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep my current ka value at one fixed reading so let us start and keep this as 15 milliampere so i'm going to keep this on 50 milliampere with the help of free host stand so i'm going to rotate this free host stand and i'm going to keep it on 50 milliampere so let's start doing this so my current is right now it is on 50 milliampere you can see that it is on 50 exactly and how to see this reading you have to see perpendicular to the surface so when i'm seeing this it is 50 milliampere when i this is 50 milliampere now i am going to see my voltmeter reading here if i see my voltmeter reading which now which line it is coinciding so i just count it again perpendicular to 1 2 3 4 fifth line it is coinciding means here is if it is coinciding with the fifth line how much is the reading comes out to be okay let us let us just calculate this okay Uh, as we already know that our least count is 0.2 and the fifth line it is coinciding so 5 into 0.2 so 5 into 0.2 into 0.2 which comes out to be 1 5 are 10 so this is going to be 1 so this is 1 volt so what i'm going to do is i'm writing here this is set of observation is 1 ammeter so this is not ammeter but this will become milli ammeter okay and my observed reading is going to be 50 milliampere which is constant so i am writing before only this will also be 50 milliampere because this is constant current is constant since it is in milliampere i don't bother about the corrected reading voltmeter reading i got it as 1 here 1 volt okay now i go for the next one r2 so i again take you here for this circuit so here is now what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch it off i'm going to switch it off first and then i will move here what i'm going to do is i will shift this on to the right point to be noted i'm just i've just shifted this to the right and this again to the next one so now my this voltmeter is connected to across r2 i switch on again here the moment i switch on i have to check first whether my current is on 50 if it is not on 50 if it is not on 50 please adjust it on 50 now you have to see this voltmeter reading so when it is on 50 you have to see your voltmeter reading and the voltmeter reading comes out to be okay i just count it as this is 5 6 7 8th line it is on 8th line so eighth line let us see again multiply here uh, when we have got eighth line multiplied by 0.2 it is 1.6 volt so my next reading is here is 1.6 volt okay yeah so we have taken this reading as 1.6 now let us go for uh, further now i'm going to correct it so this 1 volt is become 1000 by multiplying by because i'm going to convert this into millivolt so it is become 1000 millivolt now this 1.6 is nothing but again multiply by 1000 it is become 1600 millivolt this is what we got the readings now what i have to do is v upon i so my v reading is nothing but it is 1000 so it is 1000 upon this is 50 so 1000 upon 50 shunya shunya chu and how much is this comes out to be 100 Okay, now when I look at this reading, it is nothing but one thousand six hundred. Okay, again divided by this is fifty. This shunya shunya chhu, and we have to divide this one sixty upon five. So let us do one sixty upon five, and that comes to five three is a fifteen, five two is a ten. So it comes out to be thirty two. I think there is some mistake here. We'll check it again. This is one thousand. uh this is not 100 i'm sorry this is we we made a mistake 5 ones are 5 twos are 10 this is 20 i'm sorry blunder it mistake this is 20 milli uh, this is 20 ohm and this is 32 so how much we got this as 20 ohm we divided 1000 upon actually i did not divide 100 by 5 so now i divided 20 ohm this is 32 now the last one what we have to do is nothing but here is rs is r1 plus r2 so here is rs is equals to R1 plus R2. Now the value of R1 we have got here is 20, 20 plus 
okay and 20 plus 32 is how much 52 ohm so we got the value of rs as 52 here let us close this your mean value of r1 how much is the mean value of r1 is 20 how much is r2 we will write it here as 32 and the mean value of rs is 52 ohm so rs is again r1 plus r2 which is comes out to be 52 ohm this completes your second very important practical of resistance in series okay so uh, the equivalent resistance is again you have to write on 52 ohm and this completes your second experiment that is resistance in series please students when you are seeing this video please write down the details you will remember for life otherwise what will happen in the exam again you want to forget so thank you so much look for the next video that is resistance in parallel thank you